Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Inside this box, you are going to see things you've never seen before. You're going to learn things you didn't know. And you're going to have a lot of fun with this new technology. What is it? It's a Cospet. What's Cospet? Well, it's a brand that came out with a hope. And we looked at that thing, three gigabytes of stuff of RAM and, and what 32 gigabytes of storage now they're back with another watch revolutionary just like the first one with different things it's not the same specs it's got two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage but what it's really got going for it is Bluetooth calling in an Android smartwatch with removable bands and totally waterproof we are going to have fun. Are you ready? Grab your popcorn. Heart rate sensor, charging port, speaker, two buttons, SIM card, microphones hiding in here somewhere, and more. What it, is it available? <laughs> it's available or will be from Banggood. Uh, right now, and this one is a prototype directly from Cospet to get us started. So wet, we, wet your appetite and get you starting to save your pennies. Because this one, when it comes out, uh, we'll have it in the show notes at a good price in introductory retail prices here. So we're going to see that thing... Um, much less money than what we've seen in a lot of smartwatches. Okay, spec-wise, 2 gigabytes plus 16, full-on 4G LTE. Oh, whoa, whoa, are you reading that? We haven't seen blood pressure readings on an Android watch before, really, huh? Uh-huh, and eight different sports modes. So it's an integration of fitness, health, as well as uh, Android uh, apps and such. We are, call it the Brave, it's got all this going for it, touch screen, uses the regular Y Watch 2 for tethering. Interesting dynamics about this one. Stick with me, you're going to want to see some of the stuff related to that. All these different languages supported. There's our specs, here's all of the bands that we've got for um, 2G, 3G, and 4G. And 1.3 inch. Not your normal AMOLED 1.4, 1.39 inch screen. This is smaller IPS screen. There's the flag. 240 by 240 pixels. Oh, doggone it. Had everything going until we hit that. I'm sorry. That is below minimum by my standards. Only about half to two thirds of the apps will run and function in a watch that has this low of a resolution now if you're not needing all of that stuff this thing's going to be fine if the few apps you use and all of the fitness stuff that comes in the watch is all you want this watch will be fine don't let it be a showstopper unless you really do a lot of fun things with apps and games and whatnot on your watch in which case move along nothing to see here this is not the droid you're looking for 620 milliamp hour battery with that kind of screen means you're probably going to get pretty good life in it. Five days, as a matter of fact, standby. They say about a day, and I would hope a little bit longer. Charging time, magnetic coupling, then you get into the special features. Deep waterproof. I've never seen that word before, but there it is. IP68 deep waterproof. You should be able to swim with it bathe with it in cold water, run it under water if you're washing your hands, all that good stuff. Support answer and call through Bluetooth. It's got that and it's really different. Um, yeah, blood pressure, heart rate, sleep monitor. Sleep monitor support, it says. That's something we haven't seen in an Android watch either. We've seen them say that, but I haven't seen the actual app. I don't recall seeing it when I looked at this either. Check me on that. See if you see it when it goes by. Uh, pedometer multi-sport mode for all of these different sports and yes it looks like it integrates with gps compass in this one are you with me this is cool it's got a flashlight which is really it makes the screen full bright white but it works you know you can wear it and use it for a flashlight all these other functions are there auto light up screen of course it's got stopwatch yeah on and on and on and more of the specs of what it comes with, what its sizes are, and a pretty little brown box. All right, let's see what else is in here. We take the cover off. 
And forgive me for ripping it a little. That was me overexcited when the first time I had to take it apart to get into it. I'll be more careful next time. Here we got a SIM card eject thing uh, for getting your SIM card in and out. There's the standard four pin USB connected wire that you can get anywhere. That's really good. We've got another box here. Wow, what's in here? More stuff. Wow, old toolkit. There's a fancy screwdriver. What kind of tip is on that? Huh, like a hex thing or something, I guess. I don't even know why we would take the back off. Uh, tweezers, I presume to pull the SIM card out. It may not have a push and re remove. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know what this is, but I'm, I'm speechless. I think this actually is a wire that's going to be part of the hope. This is not part of this watch. I heard they would throw this in. We'll talk about this at the very end of the video and why you might want one for your cost bet hope. Interesting. Wow. Oh, all kinds of new technology here. Okay, what else have I got? A bag of screws in case we need them, a screen protector, and the brave new manual. Let's walk through this. Um, basic security, product configuration information, and... There's the picture, power key and a return key, hardware, the USB data cable, as well as a charging cable. And how do you use it? How do you get into it? That's all about putting the uh, nano SIM card in the watch. And then on this side, we got more pictures of turning it on. And there's the compass, and that looks like your sports stuff. And there's some of your icons. And there's your QR code that you scan to get yourself set up for tethering. Uh-huh. Now we've got the more app information. Checking the more section of the uh, app, I guess. There's the Brave. And this must be setting up the Bluetooth calling, I presume. Yep, here you go. All about Bluetooth calling and some common problems and how to resolve them. Wow, wow. Well, let's begin. Okay, I've taken the little cover off that was floating on there with the indicator for the SIM card, and we're gonna turn it on. Now, unlike other watches, I want you to pay careful attention to when this one boots up. You get your Cospet logo, but it's gonna be a little bit noisy. It's got a musical score, and one of the things I find fault with is it goes on and on and on forever. Now see the IPS display, how it gets dimmer as you turn it to the side, as opposed to the AMOLED kind. There we go, we're getting Android. I don't know if you can hear it, you should be able to. Nice little melody, a booting up logo, all pretty and everything. And that should be enough, but it's not. It keeps going and going and going last night and i was messing around with it and i needed to reboot it and mrs ticks was taking a nap yo yeah i got in trouble anyway uh be aware and i i can't find out to turn that off even when you dumb down all of the sound levels it seems to have that boot up sound irregardless might be wrong on that but just a word of warning that's not going to be something you turn on in the library here we are to the first watch face. We can scroll down and wow, it's a different display than we're used to, isn't it? We got power, we've got your SIM card information, your Wi-Fi, and this is your sound. And you see I have it turned on. I could go into vibrate or no sound. Um, but again, like I said, it doesn't change things other than the sound when you're active in here. Two dots means I can swirl over here. You've got alarms. You've got this thing, which is your recent screen apps appear here. And it turns out that's the same as tapping this bottom button. Okay, that's how you get to your list of apps and switch them around. Bluetooth and airplane. So your basic connectivity is here. Oh, and that little white dot, that's floating toucher. The app I always talk about, 
the app that's not available in the Google Play Store, but the incredible app that I can tap the button and I can, whoa, it jumped on me. Okay. <laughs> I can bring up something like this that I have all different kinds of capabilities to do things, including going back home and whatnot. All right, we'll let it sit over there for a while. But that's not part of the watch out of the box. You're going to get a little confusing here because I'm blending and unboxing and first look with a much more robust review because I've got a ton of apps in here. I really wanted to work this thing out. So these go round and round those two screens. And when you go to the right, there's nothing. You see how it's not pulling open. If I go up, I get into my sports stuff. Your basic pedometer uh, steps and calories burned and distance travel. And if I go this way, nothing. And if I go that way, I get the compass. And it wants me to calibrate it, of course, usually by going around like this. And when you do, remember I'm sitting in the north and if I have it calibrated, it should be at zero and it's not, but it does, if you really calibrate it for a while, it does seem to be more accurate. But right now it's a little bit off, okay? Just a word of warning. And it's saying that I'm pointing south, which is true because I'm sitting in the north. There you go, 180. Um, oh, oh, okay, it should be zero, but it's this one is pointing in the direction you're going to. So there we go. If I do it this way, it should be around zero. Okay, it, it's giving you really big digits, which is kind of cool. If I go this way and move my dot over again, uh, I, nothing. So at this level, I have compass and I have step count, pedometer information. Got it, and nothing else down that way. Different kind of user interface. Usually you have your notifications over here, but we don't on this one. So the one place we haven't gone is to the right. If I go to the right again, I can't go any further. That's the layout, folks. You've got all of your app drawer and your watch face. You've got a rotating two pages here, and you've got a compass and your step count pedometer information. So that leaves the app drawer. Let's get into here and show you a couple of things. Your basic phone and messaging and contacts are related to the SIM card. We're all used to that, but this is what's new. Android 6, we can show you that in settings. Uh, normally, Bluetooth calling was reserved to Android 5.1 watches. For those of you that know all of this deep level stuff, here we've got it happening on Android 6. And it's really interesting going to get a little technical now. Hope, bear with me. Bluetooth settings. I'm going to go in here and you see it's got a switch and it says this is the Brave. That's the name of the device. When you turn this switch on, it puts the watch in Bluetooth mode, broadcasting its name. And then you got to go to the phone and you go into Bluetooth. You don't look for a tethering app or any of that stuff. You go into Bluetooth, just like you were going to Bluetooth tether your headphones, right? It's going to act the same way. You hunt for uh, Brave and you say pair and you pair your watch and your phone through the regular Bluetooth and wham, bam, you've now got this thing set up as a Bluetooth speaker with microphone that you can use for making and receiving phone calls. We turn that on and you see that Fundu app will lose connection. That's the other part of it. The two Bluetooth things going on, but only one radio or signal or whatever that you can, you can do from here. It's either going to be Bluetooth calling when you turn this on and off and set it up for that, or it's going to be Bluetooth tethering to the tethering app and no calling is supported. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. When I, uh, when I, can I scroll from here? I could have a moment ago. No. So now it's kind of stuck and it wants to be, oh, here it is. It wants to be tethered. Uh, if I go over here, I can make calls and I got a keypad and I also have a call records for Bluetooth records uh, that you, you've, you've made calls from here before. And then you put in whatever number you want here. You press that button and it activates the call from the SIM card in your phone. Not going to demonstrate all that today. Just going to let you know that that's how it works. Now, when we come back out of here and we go over to here, we have our contacts and uh, that gets downloaded directly into the watch as well. 
At this point, no contact specifically for the Bluetooth. Okay, a bit confusing, but nonetheless, it's fully functional as Bluetooth calling on this Android 6 watch. We're hoping that that technology can migrate to other Android 6 and maybe Android 7. It's the first time we've seen anything like it. And it's here in the Cospet Brave. Yeah. Okay, settings. Couple of things to show you. Layout's a little bit different. We've got Wi-Fi here and Bluetooth separate. Now, when I go in here and I turn on Bluetooth from here, I'm turning it on in order to tether to the Y where or the 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 WII watch app, right? The Fundu app, the app that tethers with this one. <laughs> anyway, uh, we can rename this device if we want to. All right, we turn it on, and it says it uh, can uh, show received files. So when you transfer files from the app in your phone to the watch you will see them here this is how you can get to them that's probably how you can install music maybe a uh, side load apps and all kinds of things something new different way of doing it it looks like these are all of my other watches and whatnot that are here in the house all broadcasting that they're available uh, has nothing to do with it what i would do is um, tether the brave to the uh, phone app uh, at this point which is different and probably means I have to have the other Bluetooth turned off in order to get that connection. Wireless and networking is for um, tethering, I guess, and uh, also setting up your cellular network if you have the SIM card in here. Your overall display is there. You've got uh, sound we looked at. This is where you can change the volumes of all of your different devices, and you can listen to them. They sound like that. Good and loud. Media, alarm, all of those things are there. And then mode selection. And when you get into here, you have normal mode, which it's set for, and speed mode. No, I have no idea what that is. And I can't find out. If any of you guys know, leave a comment down here. And if I find out, I'll put it in there as well. But speed mode is something different. I'm going to stick with normal right now. Uh, mode selection, lift wrist to show the time. That's your uh, twist wrist thing, and it was on. And then your notifications uh, are on that you can uh, set so that it'll notify you when you're tethered to your phone. Memory clear, the clear process, clean up, clear cache. Wow. Like I said, this is totally different user interface. A lot of this we haven't seen. Here's where you set up for your um, health information and fitness, sex, age, height, weight, say OK. And then, of course, date and time, language, battery. There's your apps, your SIM cards. OK, wow, preferred SIMs for, hmm, maybe it'll keep a record of the different SIMs you have. Overall security, you can do screen lock on this watch. And you can set up unknown sources so, so you can sideload apps if you'd like to. Your overall backup and reset. Now, developer options is normally not there, but I've activated it on this watch. For those of you who know how to do that on an Android device, and once it's activated, it's there. So uh, you're not going to see this, but it has options in here that you do not want to play with. No. If you actually activate this, don't, whatever you do, play with the screen resolution. It'll really screw it up and you have to completely flash it over again. You can get into trouble. So don't even mess with that. And then overall about the watch shows you that this is the Brave 2 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, running a 6737. That means we're not having the ambient mode display um, capability because you need a 6739 for that. Android 6, and that's the build number for it. So check that. If yours is newer or older, you'll know where you are with respect to what you're seeing here. That's everything on the settings. Then you've got heart rate, which I got to tell you is pretty cool. It, it's uh, 
pretty accurate and once it gets going and if you wear this on your arm and you leave it in this mode it's going to stay running so if you want to get out and do some sort of a workout and you want to kind of track your maximum minimum and average heart rate over a period of time you can do this by just going into that mode when you're done and i'm going to interrupt it briefly here you can come in here and you can see the time um, from when to when and your max minimum and average and it's a uh, scrolling um, screen so you can see previous measurements as well it does not divide into zones it can't tell you when you're in your aerobic zone and how long you spent there unfortunately but it is at least giving you a cumulative reading and it's staying in the heart rate mode all the time it doesn't pop you out and go back to your uh, watch face which is nice blood pressure not feeling good about this it's doing the same kind of thing uh, takes it a little while it gives you your systolic and diastolic readings and they bounce all over the place they never seem to stabilize they don't iterate to an average or anything as you can see they are Catty wampus, kitty wampus, kitty cat wampus, the wampus kitty cat. They're all over the place, and I have no. And they don't. They don't change. I have, if you if you want a, a random number generator, um, this is a good one. <laughs> but you do get your last ten uh, readings uh, on a chart here, and because they're flapping around every second or two seconds yeah it's it's a good first attempt at doing blood pressure on a smartwatch now you get into multi-sport there's all the different sports that you've got you got indoor and outdoor mountain climbing cross country even marathon half marathon full marathon ride settings goodness knows lots of good stuff but i did want to show you this that if we select something like an outdoor run it's going to invoke GPS and tell you that you got to wear it and wait for GPS to lock up. When it does, you'll get notification and then you can start. But if you don't do that and you say pass, you can begin anyway, but your distance is going to be all off. You're not going to get your chart. You're not going to get any of that other kind of stuff. So it's on the way to being polished, and much more so than many of uh, the watches we've seen for actually doing fitness. It says right swipe to see where we're at. So these are some of the things that it keeps track of. Nice presentation. It's got a shelf with the data on it. And I'm not sure to get out of it. Press the back button. Press the top button. We're stuck. <laughs> Press and hold. Press down, press up. Okay. Oh, okay. We got to go all the way over one more time and stop motion. Okay. Uh, how you deal with that data, how it gets exported to the app, all those kind of things are something yet to be explored. But they're all here. So we're getting closer to having some really nice fitness capabilities. Here's your overall sports history. I guess the records would all show up in here when you work with them your weather app gallery and videos an audio center for a sound recorder or um, music playback from music that you put in the uh, watch itself which is different than bluetooth uh, music here's new there's your flashlight gives you a nice big bright white spot on the screen the google play store works uh, here's watch management where you have downloads and your file manager that you can go in and see how much available space you have out of the total you have to work with and of course you can access all kinds of things and you will notice something missing there is no clock skin folder that's because another ding it doesn't support custom watch faces at least not the standard Android way of doing it by dropping them into a folder called clock skin tried it installed one Put some in there they won't load up so we're stuck with the watch faces that i'll show you at the end that come with this watch and i don't know how you get additional ones in it ah but it does do bluetooth calling there's your basic browser you've got a nice little calculator here with some decent sized digits that works um, the calendar is useless it's just there you can touch a date and it'll light up but you can't go into it or do anything with it there's your um, 
alarms you can set. And Assistant now is when you're Bluetooth connected to your phone, you can do the find your phone and remote camera and your connection is right there. And there it is. It's the Fundu app that this one uses. Um, and, and that's all about hooking up for that with Bluetooth. Okay, voice search works, works fine. And then I've installed a few other apps that work okay on this watch. Most of them don't. Easy Voice Recorder Pro is really uh, great for uh, using as an alternative voice recorder because you can actually change the gain and, and increase the gain and pick up soft sounds if you want to. Usually these things don't do that. Breathing zone is just like breathing on the uh, Apple Watch and whatnot. The Apis browser is something that works. And now we get into um, our testing uh, apps, which I'll run through quickly so that we can incorporate some of the more advanced features in here. Am I back where I am? At? Okay, there you go. There's the processor information of what's going on, the uh, overall memory in the watch some more information on the CPU itself and the quad cores running. Okay. And the screen, 240 by 240, really low resolution, really unfortunate. Okay, that should take us back here and back again. And of course the top one takes us all the way back. Speech notes, I've talked about, this is a fun little app that you can do offline actually, uh, speech to text recognition and conversion and make notes just by talking to it. And then our Antutu benchmark. Let's run that thing. I'm gonna skip ahead uh, after we show you just a little bit of it so we can hone down a little bit on the length of this review. Ah, we have to set permissions. It's now Android 6. So remember, you've got to get into this. Now, notice how hard it is to get into this stuff. Click permissions and enable, and I can't scroll. And if I go back, it wants to exit. And so I'm I'm stuck here. If I go here and I change that and I go back, I can't scroll either. And the place to get to access the permissions from here isn't available. The workaround, well, let's get out of here. Come on, get out of here. Sorry, it's taking us a long time on this review, but this is what you're gonna have to go to through in real life with this particular watch, if I can even bail out of it. Let's press and hold, okay. Uh, back, no, press and hold. Wow, I really am stuck, huh? Okay, I'm gonna reboot, I'll be right back. Here's what it's like shutting down. Plays music, but not too long. Oh, I was sitting for so long my leg went to sleep. I hope yours isn't. Sorry, uh, it's gonna... Okay, here's what you gotta do if you're gonna download any apps. Good rule of thumb on this one. Go into settings, go down to your apps, and... Because it's Android 6 and it asks for permissions, when we're going to do something like and tutu, I'm going to go into it and I'm going to go down to permissions. And here is where I have to turn all of my permissions on. Thank goodness it will scroll here. The biggest problem I found is a lot of times things don't scroll. And if you can't get down to a button to push, you're absolutely stuck. Now, just out of curiosity, if we change that to full screen, is it still scrollable? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. But you can barely see the bottom one. So things to take into consideration. So now we set the permissions on Antutu outside of the app. And now we can actually run the darn thing and see what kind of scores we get if I get to it. Here we go. Antutu benchmark. So it's got its permissions. It's going to let us test it. And again, because it's a 240 by 240 screen, we don't even see um, the whole score on it. The nice thing about small screens, and I don't mean small diameter, I mean small pixels, is because the pixel density is so broad, 
and the numbers are so small, the lettering is going to be huge. Cool! Okay, it's playing this initial graphic. Oh, but did you hear the music stutter? All right, fairly smooth. It's actually streaming smoother than the uh, Final X7 state-of-the-art Android 7.1.1 smartwatch. But I'm guessing it's because there's not much of a screen to have to worry about pushing this stuff too very fast. So we're getting a decent graphic. Nice and loud, the speaker. Oh, you want to see the front. Okay, there you go. So like I was saying, an advantage of a small screen is it's a lot easier to read the writing unless it goes completely off the screen, right? Uh, but the trade-off is you really have some limitations with many, many apps that you got to figure out workarounds. Okay, then here's that uh, garden one showing you it's a 240 by 240. This is that Japanese garden where we fly through. And again, we're looking for how smooth is the movement and what are the transitions like from light to dark yeah this has got jerkiness to it you see that uh -huh. okay i'll be back with the final score right now hey not too bad 21 to 10 all right well over twenty thousand. that should be pretty decent um other than the uh, the graphics slow down a little bit, uh, that should be fine for all the different things you need to do on a watch. Okay, that's N22. Mm, this is just some graphic stuff. Here's our engineering mode MTK shortcut. This is the name of the app, and it gets you into the engineering mode. Now, if you notice, look how big the writing is. That's because of the small 240 by 240 screen. Uh, when we see this on a uh, AMOLED 400 by 400, it's really teeny writing. We're going to go into location services. Wow, it's huge. And we're going to go into GPS. We're going to go over here and turn GPS on. It's disabled. Do you want to enable it? Of course we do. And then we have to turn it on for high accuracy. And we approve the location Help to blah, 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 blah. Google's location services. Google collect data. I don't think so. I'll disagree on that one. But it should still allow me to do all of what we're going to do. So now I turn GPS on again. It's on. And if I hit view, I get the chart. Okay, there's the overhead sky satellite locations. Here's the little indicators coming in saying that they see the satellite, but they're not getting the signal because it's red. When these things turn green, it means they're getting a uh, lock. And we've got it indoors. Wow. Super fast, super solid GPS. Now, we just did this uh, same app on the uh, Final X7, and I couldn't even get any bars, red or green, indoors. Yet this one, as you can see, it's lighting up great. So they really are different, these Android watches, as to how well they will handle GPS. This means you should be able to get your tracking stuff, uh, Google Maps, all of that in a car easily, in indoors, most likely. I'm in a single-story building, uh, but it's locking up, which is really, really great news. Okay, so that is uh, the engineering mode. Here's your Translate app that comes with it, which is basically the Google Translate that you can use. Because you have over one gigabyte of RAM, one gigabyte or more, you can uh, download languages into the watch. And if you typically translate between two languages, uh, download them in so that you can do offline uh, translation. Really, really nice. Just an example of some graphics. Here's a koi pond that um, I use sometimes to show fluidity and smoothness of graphics. And it works really fine here on this 240 by 240 watch. Actually looks pretty crisp and clear. You wouldn't even know the screen is that small from from this one, Koi Pond. It can be used as a background on a watch or on a, on a phone too. Uh, some other stuff, here's the M22 thing, back up and restore and setting search. The last thing I wanna show you, this is always a good app to have. Of course, it's not available in the Google Play Store, but we've got archived copies of it. You can download in our smartwatch resource center. 
And uh, look in the show notes at the bottom, the very, very bottom, the number one uh, watch company sponsors that section. And there's a link to easily get over there. It's a Google Plus, Google Drive thing, and you can uh, download these different apps to put on your watch, no matter which kind you've got. Accessibility is where you can get in here and turn magnification on if you want to. Not that you need it much on this watch, but when you do and you triple tap and hold, you can zoom and move around and read things that are small or look at pictures close up, whatever you'd like. Triple tapping and not holding locks it in that place. Well, you can kind of move it a little bit. Actually, that's closing it is what's going on there. Triple tap again to take you back. Okay, so that's another little uh, good to know app settings search, which like I said, unfortunately is no longer available. And then floating toucher is our nice little dot over there. Uh, so that covers most of, well, all of the installed apps and quite a few of the uh, third party apps that will actually work on this particular watch and the watch faces. Now, each time you press and hold, it goes back to the first watch face. And it's a simple analog one. I don't know why you need all of this. We've got all these lines and lines and more lines, but you've got your time and another little uh, display down there that's really tiny that may be power, I'm not sure. And you've got another option that's uh, showing you some of your step count information along with time and day of the week. Then you got this fancy Nike kind. We've seen that on many of the sports watches that's got bright digits. No, you can't change the time to uh, 12, 24, to 24, to 12 hour mode. It seems to be stuck in 24 hour military time, um, unfortunately. There's the one that shows the power ring and the time. That's the one I typically have it on. And each time I got to go back from the beginning a little further, another analog watch here. That's kind of a nice dressy one, if you like. And there's a nice digital one. This is, a, this is probably your best one, high contrast for outdoor use in the bright sunlight, if you want to really see the time. But again, it's afternoon here, as you can tell, it's uh, giving me that kind of a reading. Here's another little digital one. I think you get the idea, and I think I'm just about done. Let's see. I have that one, and then that one, and then that one. So I have those three more. There's one more digital one I'll bring up here. Shows your weather, which is somewhat accurate, but it's always in degrees centigrade. So if you are a metric person, this is a great watch for you. What else can I tell you? Removable bands, waterproof. Um, you can have at it. You can make it a pocket watch if you want to, I guess. And... Bluetooth calling. So you could hop it in your pocket and you get a Bluetooth call coming to your phone. You could bring it up and carry on the conversation right here from the watch. It's small enough that it would work on a woman's wrist. I should have put it on before I took the bands off. Uh, but there you go. That's an idea. It's kind of thick, not too terribly thick, but it's definitely thinner um, or smaller than the, uh, the Hope watch. Speaking of, where's my Hope? Hang on. Here we go, speak of the devil. Now you can kind of see them side by side. How do they stack up? Hmm. Hmm. Are they about the, the same? Come back here. What do you think? Come back here. Little bit smaller, I guess. I don't know, two buttons. This puppy's got a camera on it, right? This one doesn't. Interesting. Now, here's what I wanted to tell you at the very beginning. For those of you who have a hope or are thinking of getting the hope, that's the, that's the brave, that's the hope. Um, that wire, that funky wire I got in the box, this does not come in your box if you get the brave, okay? It's uh, only going to come, I don't even know if it's going to come if you get the hope. I think it's something you're going to have to order on your own. What this is, you see those four pins on the bottom? This is a really special connector now that you can use as a data cable. Because if you recall, when we got the Hope, it only has two pins. And the charging connector only has two pins. And that's for battery only. And there's no way to transfer files back and forth to a computer like you do normally, like you can do with this one, with only two pins. So, the creative guys 
led by Pablo Eleven. You always hear me talk about him because he's just, he's a genius in this stuff. He really is. I don't know where we would be if it weren't for him. Has rigged this thing up. You take off the SIM cover. Now look inside. You see the, the, the bent pins that are bent up. There's six of them. Those are where your uh, nano SIM rests to give you the connectivity. But above that, you see those four little dots? Just like you'd see on the, on the back here. But there's four of them. Well, that's where you have your data connection. So this is a special cable that's been made and you'll be able to purchase that you stick on in here. See if I can get this right. There, you hear it snap in? Now I've connected to those four pins and in a crazy kind of way, it's just like having stuck something on here. I can now plug this into my computer and I can transfer apps watch faces, music, whatever I would like, back and forth to this watch. But you got to use this and you get to it through the SIM compartment. Oh, these are getting way more complicated. Everything is going on in them. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's why it's a long review. My apologies for that, but I wanted you to definitely see how hard it is to work with an Android watch with 240 by 240 screen. And even something like granting permissions to an app, you got to think it through. You got to do some extra, extra effort if you're going to get a watch like this. But you got a pretty decent watch for a really good price. A good sized battery should last long and it does Bluetooth calling. All right. Bang good. Check the show notes down below when they've got it. You can probably pre-order it now. We'll try to get you a good coupon on this one so you can pick it up at a decent price and, uh, We'll see you again soon. It's been a day. Now my foot's asleep again. All right.